I posted a video of my Icon Corner at one point uh, a month or two ago um, to show off my Lancelot Andrews icons just because at one point I really wanted to see what a Lancelot Andrews icon uh, from the, the website, their press um, website, looked like. And um, I thought I'd share those because they actually are pretty good. And since then, I have actually moved locations of the icons. My wife uses uh, our office for work with clients who, um, she works for a secular company. So, not necessarily wanting to see all the icons there, but, but in addition, uh, it just was a tight quarter where it would probably fit from here to here. Whereas I get this whole wall now, which is just fantastic for my prayer life. Not so much maybe my budget. Um, however, I wanted to show some of the icons that I have in more depth and uh, so the additions and subtractions that I've gone through. Uh, the first thing I will actually, I think, kick off with is this Holy Trinity icon from Legacy Icons. The most famous rendition of this, I would say, is Rublev's work of this. Uh, I, I like the Rublev art. It's, um, of course, that, that late medieval era style of Russian iconography, but I think this is actually a Greek rendition of the Holy Trinity. I want to say Legacy Icons has it under the Kufus. K-O-U-F-O-S um, iconography uh, area and I, I just think first of all the shape of this is perfect you can show the whole trinity over your icon of uh, or, or your crucifix or your, your cross and then your icon of Christ on the Theotokos so I think it's perfect in that you can then just throw something above it that doesn't feel somewhat disrespectful. Not that it would be probably disrespectful anyways, but if anyone, um, how do I put that sound non-heretical? Um, the Trinity as a whole, going on top icon-wise of an icon corner above everyone else just makes sense to me. So, that is the first icon I'll show. This one is a crucifix, of course, of Jesus Christ. I got this a few years ago when I was in the Roman Communion from the, uh, the Vatican's website. And I got it blessed by uh, the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis, unless you are a um, set of a contest and then you think that... Francis is whatever you think he is. Um, it was actually one of my more expensive icons, as it was the first icon I owned. And not knowing of legacy icons or Etsy uh, or, oh, let's see, I think Uncut Mountain Press or Uncut Mountain images i don't recall there's a whole bunch of other orthodox or byzantine catholic icons uh iconography websites so this i think was actually a better chunk of a hundred dollars however it also somehow feels better quality and it's because you can see the wood really is um cut pretty well and I don't, I don't believe this is hand painted, but if you feel it, it really does feel textured in some way. Um, obviously, you guys can't feel it. However, I can't say not to order an icon through the Vatican's website because the one icon I have from them is really nice. Uh, besides theological issues one may have with Roman Catholicism, um, I don't have any other issues with that icon. Wonderful. Beautifully made. Next, I have uh, a legacy icon of um, the Holy Family with, well, I mean, Jesus was part of the Holy Family, obviously, 
And unfortunately, you can see that I have a little chip there on Joseph. Who, whoops, I touched his head. Um, yeah, so, um, the, 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 the birth narrative, um, uh, the, uh, in the, in the cavern, I think, coming from the Protovangelium of, of J, of, uh, yeah, James, I think it is, um, I guess it wouldn't be manger or anything like that. Uh, it, this is one of my regrets, uh, is buying this icon in this size. I wish, if, if you guys are asking for more opinions, which is partly why I'm posting this, I think the extra small size on legacy icons is, it's kind of a waste. Uh, it really depends on what your wall space is, but but to venerate this, if you were to go up and kiss this, it gets a little tight. Um, but then again, it is a beautiful icon. And the quality of the legacy icons, oops, excuse me, has, is, is superb. Um, how this chipped, I don't know. It's not their fault because it has fallen a few times when I didn't have it on a, a nail. Um, I had it downstairs for, um, Advent. Um, but I guess the next icon, if I'm going in whatever the heck order I'm going in, is, uh, an icon, another one from Legacy Icons of, uh, Theotokos with baby Christ. And I forget the name of this icon. I, I believe it is, um, a Russian icon in nature. Um, but for whatever reason, I would guess it was around Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving. Legacy icons put a bunch of their quick ship icons, I guess we'd call it, on, on half off. So I saw this, I didn't have a large kind of centerpiece Virgin Mary icon. So the large size at half off is uh, 20 bucks, something like that. And it's, there's no complaints here. It's, it's beautiful um, as almost every icon that's ever existed is. Um, just yes if if you are looking for a, a theotokos icon you can do much 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 worse I'm sadly probably sure of um legacy icons again about as good as it gets and speaking of legacy icons in that first order i did with the um christmas icon i showed earlier i also did a random icon of uh on legacy icons you can order a mystery icon and it will come in 20 percent off i was not familiar with this saint i believe it is saint seraphim um a 15th 16th 17th uh century saint somewhere around there in the eastern church um I am not part of the Eastern Communion at this time. Uh, however, I know in the past the former Pope Benedict had, if you are a Catholic, Roman Catholic, called out by name Saint Seraphim as Saint Seraphim. So uh, I guess some of that branch theory going on that the uh, Anglicans are, are usually claimed to have. It's it's interesting, the whole two lungs theory then kind of sounds a little bit like the branch theory that the Anglicans push. Um, and then, of course, we have Christ the Pantocrator. Pantocrator? I will confess, I don't know how to pronounce that. But it is probably my favorite icon of all time. Uh, when I first came back to Christianity a few years ago, um, I had a, a debate raging inside of me between Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. Um, I'm sorry, I have a cat that's scratching at something. Come on, stop doing that. I don't think she's going to stop doing that, so please excuse that noise, and I will try not to go insane hearing it. Um, but, but going back to that, uh, 
even though I wound up going the Roman Catholic way, um, partly because of ease, because that's how I grew up, but, but it gets into that because I'm not Roman Catholic anymore, even, um, I, I love this icon, and there's nothing heretical about icons in Roman Catholicism, but, um, I loved it enough that I actually got this icon as a phone um, protector on the on. So, so it's actually on my phone right now, which you guys cannot see currently. Um, wonderful. It was not part of that half off deal, but I thought, well, if I'm getting Mary half off, I need to complete my collection. Um, well, <laughs> one of the two uh, main collection i guess we'll say icons and that would be christ uh so i think we'll then head here this is called the unburning bush it's an icon that i had to do a lot of research on to figure out a bit more about um i bought it off of etsy oh for maybe four dollars and considering it is i would say four by six it is a great price um I think I can softly recommend buying icons off of Etsy. I have purchased icons and never been disappointed, but wished that I had bought bigger ones. This is a good-sized icon. I, I wish I, I could have found it bigger just because of the detail. You can see... Oh, we look in there, obviously. So this was one of the issues when I bought it. I was nervous this was depicting God the Father. I posted about that on the internet, and this is actually Christ. So one of the traditions of the church is that Moses was actually speaking or, or interacting with Christ rather than the Father. Um, that's something found more in the East, I think, at least with some in the East claiming that Moses recognized that there was a trinity, whereas in the West we would say, well, he might not have recognized it was the trinity, but it probably was Christ he was interacting with. Um, all of this is quite possibly wrong. I am not a theologian. I am a mediocre Christian who tries to read what he can. But uh, on that, yeah, obviously we see then Christ the host of angels, the two tablets of the commandments. Then we have one, two, three, four, I think five iterations of Moses on there. So if you are one who venerates their icons with a kiss, this is a tough icon to do that with at this size. Um, so I would say if, if you are looking on Etsy, considering the price, well, I guess you could say maybe you want to go through a more, um, quality iconography place. Um, I think that the Etsy icons are perfectly fine, but, uh, what's more interesting about this is obviously the theology of Mary with the baby Jesus in the unburning bush that Moses saw, um, the theology being that the the bush was able to maintain the fire and, and remain a bush and not burn. That Mary, being the womb of God, was able to maintain her virginity even though she bore Christ. Uh, interestingly, it, this is the part that I did research on. I had no idea who this is. I thought... Well, maybe it's Aaron. He's really important to the Exodus story. Um, or maybe it was Isaiah, because you could see the scroll. Maybe it was related to uh, just some of the prophecies in Isaiah. This is, I believe, St. John of Damascus. And I and I think, well, I, I discovered that online, but it, it's related because St. John of Damascus defended icons so much. So I think that's why he got thrown in here. And this, it's cut off. There, there must be a larger image, but this is, I believe, also St. Catherine of Alexandria being placed on uh, Mount Catherine. 
So this is a lot going on with it. I actually have grown to really be fond of it. Um, I'm not always on board with all the Marian dogmas. So this initially um, caused me trouble. Um, but as I've developed in my reading and study of the early fathers, um, I get it. Um, and besides that, really, the, the depiction of what I thought was the father was, was bothersome. However, um, while I was about to give it to my dad and say, here you go, you are Roman Catholic, so certainly you would affirm everything on here, I kept it, and um, I love it. I love the Mother of God. So, going further down, we have, this was the legacy icon, icon of Jonah, St. Jonah. In the whale. I think this is from um, Mount Athos. This is, this is an icon that's in Mount Athos somewhere. Uh, another one where th th there was a period in time where Legacy Icons was choosing two icons per week that they would be half off any of the sizes sans cathedral size. I was new to iconography. I just liked the artwork. I didn't know what to make of um, a lot of the stuff. So I saw this. I thought, "What the heck? Let's get a let's get one." Um, I wish I got one in a small instead of extra small. But considering this is extra small, and that would have meant it cost, I think nine dollars. Great, great price. Great artwork. I don't know Greek. If I did, it would be probably more meaningful. But. Um, I can't help but think I bought another half-off icon with this, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But we'll move on. For Christmas, my sister got me this. The Harrowing of Hell, or The Resurrection, whatever name you'd want to choose it. Uh, probably, I already said Christ the Pantocrator, Pantocrator, I forget again what the correct pronunciation is is my favorite icon realistically it is probably of this scene um while i don't know that i'm a a faithful universalist i i i think this messages of the, the harrowing of hell um gives hope to some i know there are many that would say it was just the prophets of the old testament um but then again, you hear stories of, of uh, tradition saying that Plato and Aristotle were the first to greet Christ when he came down to Abraham's bosom. Um, legacy icons, again, wonderful depiction. They have about 20 different harrowing of hell um, icons that I couldn't choose. I, I really liked almost all of them, um, with one being, I think, from Cora Church that I really preferred, however, looking at this, I really started to like it, and uh, I honestly asked my sister what she thought since she was buying it, and she pointed this one out, and yeah, I, I, I partly wanted some more diversity in the artwork I have, because a lot of it is um, Cora Church or Mount Athos iconography, but another one my sister got is St. Anne. That is Mary, the mother of God's mother. Um, legacy icon, again, I think this one is Mount Athos. Uh, uh, going on a guess, they, they, they tell you on the website. Uh, the church I go to currently is actually named St. Anne's Episcopal Church. So how perfect is that? And you can see... There's the Holy Spirit, I believe, descending down on St. Anne, telling her... Oh, excuse me. That's what I got for holding this with one hand. Um, telling her that, actually, you are going to be having a child. Uh, I should probably s speed this up. This is a long video. Oh, I promised myself also I wouldn't get any more icons. However, Legacy Icon, again, had a deal where... If you bought something on their website, they would send you a coupon for 20% off. Well, they had 20% off the general store as well as that 20% off coupon. So, being a Western Christian, they had these wonderful 
Western depictions of some of the gospel stories and authors and saints. This is St. Matthew. I believe it is artwork taken from a collection of the gospels from medieval England, um, first century, I believe. I thought it was nice to have a change of pace, and as I am really kind of leaning more towards my Western Christian roots, um, I, I really always love the East, I've contemplated conversion to the, the Orthodox for two years, still going on. Um, I really just appreciated this art. It's beautiful. Wonderful to just see Western iconography. That's not a statue. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Now, we get to an Etsy store named St. Macarius Monastery. And it's named St. Macarius Monastery because it is a Orthodox monastery out of either California or Arizona. And if you go in further, it actually doesn't look bad on the phone. You can see the digitized, digitized, hmm, I'm going to choose a different word there. There's a digital look to this image. Um, that is not the iconographer or the monastery's fault. That is me choosing an image that probably shouldn't have been used on an icon. That said, looks pretty good. Not bad. I would recommend St. Macarius Monastery on Etsy. This was one of the, the custom options, like I said, that you can get. However, it is, I think, $17 for a 4x6 or a 5x7, which is a bargain, I think, for an icon of that size. And they have icons that weren't custom-made, such as this fantastic, maybe the best St. Patrick icon I have seen. And for that price, unbeatable, in my opinion, clean looks great english this has become a thing for me sometimes i go to gregory anisa i have no idea what that says icons in english it's not a heresy <laughs> and i don't know if anyone is saying it was but it makes it really convenient and another aspect is they have different coloring of edges you can buy um I tend to think the red or the burgundy or this natural, actually this is probably my favorite, border is the best. Um, however, I will show one later that I think works, that they, they have a natural wood, so it's like a tan. Kind of odd to see, but it's a tan. But let's go back. Here is another Etsy shop icon, St. Julian of Norwich. And I mentioned it before, but I am in the Anglican Communion. St. Julian of Norwich has a feast day in the Anglican Communion. And at one point, from my understanding, Rome had a feast day for Julian of Norwich. Um, I think it's gone the way of St. Valentine, where it's no longer necessarily on the calendar. But that doesn't mean that Julian of Norwich isn't venerated. Um... She wasn't officially canonized by Rome, but a lot of the earlier saints weren't. So um, take that as you will. I would hard be hard-pressed to say that if someone is getting messages, truly getting messages from God, which um, I need to probably reread um, Julian's work, that they probably are highly favored by Christ. Not highly favored like Mary was in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. Don't wanna, don't wanna make this controversial. Um, but I think this is wonderful. She is also, I believe, a patron saint in the Anglican Communion of cats, and I have two cats, and I love cats. So that was a no-brainer. Um, I also discovered some of the artwork meanings. Uh, so red often uh, signifies divine love in icons. This looked redder on the Etsy, but it's still reddish. And I thought that's pretty perfect for St. Julian in Norwich, who said, all shall be well and God is love. Things of those in nature. Um, anyways, please don't come at me if you disagree with Julian in Norwich. I would be curious to hear what you have to say. Any Roman Catholics in this uh, video, 
um, one of the two viewers that I probably get, <laughs> maybe. Um, so then we have, I showed this earlier, St. Gregory and Nisa. As a soft universalist, or at least hopeful universalist, or some days more ardent universalist, this was a no-brainer. Um, another one where I regret not having a bigger one. I got it with that first order. However, great, great stuff. Even besides Gregory's, depending on who you are, um, heretical views, I don't think they'd be heretical. He wrote the great, great catechesis. Um, he's a doctor of the church, or at least if he's not in the Roman sense, um, he really probably is in every other sense. And then here's his brother, St. Basil the Great. I believe that's also, these are both from the, no, I think this is from Cora Church, as is this. That's why I wanted that, because it matched this so well. Whereas I think this is from Mount Athos, and it's just, I really should probably have John Chrysostom, because um, these three right here, you know, the Cappadocian Fathers, I guess Chrysostom isn't a Cappadocian, but he is one of the most important saints of the Christian Church. Um... It just felt perfect to have. They're almost wearing the same garb. This is just <laughs> one of my <laughs> proudest uh, icon positioning I have here. <laughs> the three of them. Oh, boy. Uh, I cracked myself up, apparently. Um, here we have going over Lancelot Andrews Press icons again. And pardon for the length of this video. It is extensive. This is um, another crown jewel of my icon corner, and, and I'm bordering on pride here, so um, I need to shut up. <laughs> I'm not proud that I own these. I'm, I'm just enamored with the beauty. Uh, Our Lady of Glastonbury. Uh, per legend, and Dale, if you're watching, I think... You mentioned this to me. There was, well, first of all, Joseph of Arimathea, per uh, tradition, went to the British Isles to spread Christianity. And at some point, we all know, well, most of us know about Our Lady of Walsingham, the, the Marian apparition. This apparition occurred that I am not too familiar with. I have looked to try to, to find out more about this story, but I... I it almost sounded like Mary and the the child Christ appeared to Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, in Glastonbury, England. I could be wrong, but there's just a lot going on with this icon that is wonderful. This beautiful, beautiful landscape down here of what I assume is Glastonbury in the medieval England. Um, that really makes me want to travel. Um maybe time travel <laughs> back to that uh we have of course the mother of god with christ saint michael the archangel um joseph of arimathea some more important saints of the english isles saint dunstan archbishop of canterbury saint bridget of kildare saint david of wales saint gildan the wife and saint patrick uh, Lancelot Andrews is a Western Orthodox Rite Church um, publisher, so it makes sense. I, I think a lot of the Western Rite of Orthodoxy takes from the Anglican liturgy. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm just some idiot with a camera here. No one, no one who knows a lot of good things. Um, so it makes sense that they would have this icon on their website of all these wonderful saints. And from Lancelot Andrews Press, again, we have Paul. And if I have a complaint about Lancelot Andrews, besides their communication and shipping times, which is not what we're going on about, it's that they do not have a matching icon of Peter. <clears throat> Excuse me. It just seems like it would make sense, Peter and Paul. You hear that? They possibly founded the Roman Church together, some would say, or at least were both martyred um, 
in Rome, I think is correct. Again, I am... Sometimes my tradition work is... Uh, you know, um, so, th that's my only complaint with this icon, is that I wish I could have an icon of Peter from Lancelot Andrews here. However, St. Macarius Monastery on Etsy did have a St. Peter icon. It wasn't necessarily my favorite depiction of Peter, but I think it is fairly nice, and I wanted it. I was placing an order, and I thought, this is kind of a different colored icon. This would be kind of unique to have in that sense, too. Um, the orange cream with it. Uh, what you could assume are possibly related to the keys of heaven, um, or could be related to his writings in First and Second Peter. Um, but this is where that natural wood came into play. I thought that really fit that, so that's the only reason I did the natural. And yeah, it's it's it works for this icon. I don't know if it would work for any other unless it's this natural cream color. But let's finish up here. We've got to five icons left because I take my time. We have St. Moses the Ethiopian, St. Moses the Strong, St. Moses the Black. I don't know how much we want to say that nowadays. I don't know if it's that bad either, though. Uh, this is another icon I got off of Etsy that I believe is actually from a Coptic source. You just don't see Coptic icons often. Yeah. You can see there's a little bit of dust from the wall on it because I've moved this a few times. But I I appreciate this icon a lot. Um, his story, I I, um, I really like someone who who is a, a thief, a murderer who can be saved if he can be saved. Who can't so that really kind of stuck with me and then it was it was advent i thought oh boy i love the story of saint nicholas let's get a saint nicholas icon so i can put it up another one from legacy icons uh saint nicholas i think most of us know the story of him giving money to the three daughters um and legend grew. It's, it's probably not true. In fact, it's almost certainly not true that he threw the money down the, the chimney and it landed in the girl's stocking, and that's why we get stockings. But um, still, <laughs> who doesn't love, you know, some embellishment's kind of fun. Uh, I think also the slapping of Arius is not recorded in the Council of Nicaea. That might be another fiction over fact story happily wrong if so um but saint nicholas wonderfully charitable guy that's why he is known as saint nick and associated with christmas or whatever santa claus would be <laughs> all right so we have another icon from lancelot andrews press this is saint sophia and I've always called her that, and now I'm really questioning all of a sudden if that's actually her name. I'm positive, I'm pretty positive it is. But with saints, faith, hope, and charity. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to get icons just because they look pretty necessarily. They should, they should say something. And um, we know that they, these were martyrs in the early church. And faith, hope, and charity, who doesn't need more of that? But also because my wife thought this really was a beautiful icon. It looks a little less dreary than some of these other icons. And I don't know if it's the pops of color. It's that these are women. I don't know. Uh, something really dries, draws my eyes to this icon. I agree with her. It's um, Lancelot Andrews Press or whoever the artist who did this really knocked out of the park. And here we get to some controversy. No, this is not St. Clement of Rome. This is St. Clement of Alexandria. Venerated in, per the internet, as I've seen on some official documents, the Oriental Orthodox website, or uh, the Oriental Orthodox Communion, 
was in the Roman communion and the Anglican communion, currently still. In fact, I know that St. Clement of Alexandria has a feast day in the um, Anglican communion. Not there anymore, at least, is the Eastern Orthodox communion. I've seen it said that Clement was venerated at one point. I cannot confirm that. I've seen polemical Orthodox saying they've never, never venerated Clement. I find that a little bit hard to believe um, because St. Clement of Alexandria was one of the earliest church writers of uh, the second century, I'd say. Um, some of his things were condemned in, uh, in, in some councils eventually, more so through Origen and Apocatastasis. Um, again, in the past, maybe more than now, I've identified with universalism. I still have a hope, at least for universalism. I don't think I can say with any certainty. Um, I, you know, maybe, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's hard not to, to know because there's things in the New Testament that Jesus says that would certainly indicate otherwise. But then there's things that Paul says that would say otherwise. And then early church fathers and then other church fathers that disagree. Um, but having a hope isn't a bad thing. I think that as all Christians, we're supposed to hope for the salvation of all. And then lastly, Legacy Icon, another 20% off by getting a mystery icon. And I get Catherine of Alexandria. When I placed this, it was recent. I was a little concerned. It was going to be a duplicate. However, I lucked out and I get one of the other early Christian martyrs who was featured right there, apparently. <laughs> All right, uh, another beautiful. So if you're going to get anything out of this, it's that Legacy, I uh, Legacy Icons rules. Uh, St. Macarius Orthodox Monastery on Etsy rules. Lancelot Andrews Press um, Icons rule, though you will probably get it shipped about three days, nope, three weeks later after you ordered it, which is frustrating, I get. And uh, some of these other little Etsy creators also are pretty dang good. So, there is my icons. I really need to stop buying them, so this is probably going to be the last of them you see. I guess I do have this little triptych here. And I got this from a garage sale. There's a little bit of wax on there. Oh. So I got St. Nick, Nicholas again, Theotokos with Christ, and St. Spiridon. And you can see this is pretty old because Spiridon's halo is actually withered away. Um, but, okay, if for some reason you want to watch this monstrosity of a video, um, thanks for watching, and just ignore my messy floor down there.